to see, frankly, how bad democracy now has gotten, just basically parroting U.S. State Department talking points with regards to, um, you know, this whole debunked Russiagate conspiracy, as well as, you know, really being on the side of the U.S. empire and the war in Syria, propping up, you know, the false claims that Assad gassed his own citizens and lauding the white helmets as some type of um, you know great humanitarian organization when they're anything from that and case in point this is from yesterday um, they had this guest on who is hugely anti-russian in their propaganda and um, I mean, this seems to be, frankly, very typical of the type of guests that they have on with regards to Russiagate or, or Syria, and I think Aramate is right. Democracy Now! got in the Russiagate train in September 2016. It got so bad that after April 2017, they froze out longtime guests and top Russia expert Stephen F. Cohen up until his passing in September 2020. And I mean, Stephen F. Cohen was just really again yeah an amazing expert on russia he lived there for quite some time he's a scholar he comes at it from a very fact-based approach he was call willing to call out um you know bullshit on both sides but he's not going to parrot this anti-russia propaganda because he's not a fucking propagandist or he wasn't rest may rest in peace <laughs> Learning nothing, they continue to humiliate themselves and betray the show's legacy. I agree. I mean, they don't have Aaron Mate on. He used to be on the show. Maybe have him on to discuss what's going on with that OPCW cover-up. I mean, he spoke at the UN fucking Security Council on it. He is, ex he is an expert on that matter. But no, they don't have people like him on. They have this fucking hack. Let's take a listen. This is talking about the meeting between uh, Putin and Biden, obviously. This is Masha Gessen. He, um, the very fact of the summit, the, the fact that Biden is, uh, you know, that Biden called him a worthy adversary, that he called him bright, that he's being treated as someone to sit down with um, and discuss the world. All of these are things that are incredibly valuable to Putin, and they are, unfortunately for him, an end in itself. Right? He accomplishes what he has come to Geneva for. How did, I mean, it just seems like she's just pulling the shit out of thin air. How do you actually know that? Did you interview him? Do you have a source that's close to him? Like, you're just basing this off of nothing, just besmirching Putin because you don't, you obviously don't care for him by simply having the summit. Biden is concerned in the sort of standard American idiom um, with deliverables, with... Uh... Yes, he's, he's so concerned with deliverables, he went back on basically every fucking campaign promise. $15 minimum wage, public option, canceling student loan debt, etc., etc. But yes, he's, he's very concerned with deliverables. I mean, what the fuck? finding areas of common interest and he's alone in that he's alone in I, again it's it's pure fucking projection from both sides she clearly doesn't know much about biden as a politician and it seems like she's just completely making up stuff about putin because she has a very anti-russian anti-putin bias clearly actually trying to negotiate in good faith there are also other significant distinctions between these two men one is a legitimately elected president and <laughs> oh man but putin isn't somehow faith actor the other biden she's saying fucking joe biden is a bad faith actor real or a good faith actor i should say really again the motherfucker lied about everything that he said he was going to do once he got elected. How is that a good faith actor? I mean, that is fucking ridiculous. Propping up Joe Biden as some 
fucking amazing person who has standards and morals and acts in good faith. It's a complete fucking bullshit. And <clears throat> I mean, frankly, I don't know enough about uh, the, you know, the last time Putin was elected to comment on whether it was legitimate or not. I mean, for fuck's sake, I, I think you have a you should have a very difficult time saying any election in the United States is legitimate when it comes down to money and power and you're going to have a really hard time if you're not if you don't have that D or R next to your name getting elected to any office. So how is that legitimate? It's not. Is a dictator who and Biden's not a dictator. Look at US imperialism. It hasn't changed since Trump out of since Trump got out of office and Biden took over, still controlling one third of fucking Syria, the oil rich and food producing region. We're still starving that country with sanctions. Same with Venezuela in Iran. That seems pretty fucking dictatorial to me. Russia's not doing that. The United States is. Shores up his power by murdering his opponents, by jailing his opponents, and by rigging elections. I mean, again, needs to be pointed out, the United States has the world's biggest prison population. Roughly 5% of the world's population in the United States with 22 to 25% of the world's prison population. We jail more people than fucking Russia. This fucking hack. And dominating the media, he is not an Ill illegitimate president, and he is not a good faith negotiator. <laughs> Jesus. So this this is the type of guess that Democracy Now has on. Um, it's pretty pretty fucking disgusting, right? Oh, and then um, yeah, let me show this other clip. Let's see. Oops. Now go for it. No, actually, we'll just look. Uh, Max Blumen. There we go. He also t tweeted out a short clip. Um, yeah, he under Moxie now, Masha Gessen says many Russians are choosing not to take vaccines because of the general sort of cultural culture of lack of respect for human life. Huh? What is... Um, Masha Gessen talking about Russians are skeptical of the government that's why they aren't taking the vaccine um, also there's a big anti-vax vibe here kind of like in America <clears throat> so this is the type of guess that Democracy Now! gives their you know pretty big platform to right taking the vaccine but I think another reason that they are not taking the vaccine is because of the general sort of culture of a lack of respect for human life which is also a characteristic of this particular government. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, really? <sighs> Russophobia, Russophobia is encouraged by corporate media. Reminds me of the one-sided anti-Serb coverage in the 90s. Yeah, many longtime DN listeners are choosing to unsubscribe their podcast feeds because of the general sort of no culture of neo-Cold War hysteria. Agreed. Agreed. Um, this is pure context. Yes, agreed. This, yeah, this is what I was trying to say. He just does it a little more eloquently. This is pure context-free, mind-numbing, imperialist propaganda. The only difference between Democracy Now! and MSNBC here is former Radio Free Europe director. Holy shit, that really, okay. That makes a little bit more sense. Used to be, she used to be the director of Radio Free Europe. Basically, this group funded by the CIA U.S. State Department to promote regime change and imperialism um, wears a loud blazer on the ladder network. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. That's fucking, that's very revealing. Jesus Christ, dude. It's fucking, it's disgusting. This is who, this is who democracy now the former director of Radio Free fucking Europe. No wonder she has this fucking anti 
uh, Russian rhetoric and viewpoints. Disgusting. You wouldn't probably get a job at Radio Free Europe if you didn't have... Um, yeah. Damn. Fuck. That's pretty... That's pretty revealing though, right? And that was her responding. Next time maybe listen before responding. I cited two reasons. Lack of trust in government. to anti-vax culture. But with the distinction that in Russia it's rooted in culture disregard for human life. When risky behavior is almost... I mean, talk about a culture that has a disregard for human life. 600 plus thousand people in the United States have died from the coronavirus. I am a culture with high regard for human life. You sound a whole lot like this, Masha. Lol, does America have a culture of high regard for human life? Exactly, of course they don't. <laughs> yeah, sounds like she didn't like getting called out on her bullshit. Um, number of deaths in... Russia from COVID. Where's the number? Wow, so <laughs> substantially less than the United States, 125,000. Um, <laughs> quite a bit fucking less. How, what's their um, population? So 125,000. Population of Russia. Let's see how much it is. Yeah, so quite a bit less than the United States. Wow. Um, God, what a hack, though. That is who... And they've had on, um, what's his name? Shit, what is that guy's name? Um, who parroted all that, um, the talk of the Chinese committing genocide against the Uyghur Muslims, that far right. Uh, Adrian Zenz, they had, Democracy Now! had on that nut job presenting him as some expert on the issue when his work has been thoroughly debunked and he's just a complete right-wing fundamentalist christian with some really freaking wacko views um let's see <laughs> and then of course yeah she's a um a critic of Donald Donald Trump, but doesn't appear to have any of that same rhetoric for Biden. So just a liberal liberal hack. Um, I mean, do I want to listen to more of this? Probably not, frankly. But we'll give it a shot. Right. Oh, here's the transcripts. I'd rather do that. Um, Welcome back. So she's been on the show before. What what a surprise. But we don't actually have... Yeah. Okay, that's the first part we heard. Fifth president... Um, and then she's talking about <laughs> American democracy. 
Jesus Christ, how uh, deranged are the people that they're having on democracy now? Jeez, America's never been a democracy, you fucking nut job. God clearly doesn't have an understanding of <laughs> the American political system um, and obviously has this huge anti-Russian bias that we've pointed out. Oh my god. Again, this is this is bullshit. The reason that the Assad that Russia and Putin stepped in to this conflict, to this illegal war that the United States started in Syria was so these Al Qaeda linked group, these Al these Al Nusra groups, these far right fucking crazy fanatical jihadists wouldn't take over the country. The United States was willing to let that happen as a bargaining chip to get Assad out of power. They are willing to let Al-Qaeda and these other fucking fanatical groups take over the country. Putin and Russia saw that as a bad thing because it is. They stepped in at that point. That was the right thing to do. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Then parodying this stockpiles of chemical weapons where where is your source for that it just seems like you're making shit up and then there's Nermeen Sheikh Cyber criminals. <laughs> Weaponized charges. I mean, again, the United States does that same fucking thing, if that's even true about Russia. Get fucking Julian Assange languishing away in that high security prison in the UK for exposing the crimes of the US Empire. And guess where Edward Snowden got asylum? In Russia. Hmm. So I suspect that comment was made thoughtlessly. <laughs> oh my god. So horrible, dude. Then talking about cyber warfare, the fucking... I mean, of course, the U.S. is fucking engaged in that shit all over the place. Okay... <laughs> and then Joe Biden, Navalny's death be another indication that Russia has little or no intention of abiding by basic fundamental human rights. Oh, fuck. Tell that to the fucking people in Syria, in Venezuela, in Iran right now who are literally being starved to death because of U.S. sanctions. What happened to their fucking fundamental human rights, Joe Biden? Jesus Christ. And this Navalny character is not some fucking lovable opposition critic. Case in point. Um, occasional reminder, Alexei Navalny isn't the leader of Russia's opposition. There's, uni there's no united opposition in Russia. And other opposition figures haven't chosen Navalny as their leader. Also, his political platform is to the right of Marine Le Pen in France. 
making HRW's yeah, human rights watch is trash endorsement odd. Navalny has compared Muslims to cockroaches, proposes tough restrictions on immigration from majority Islamic states, but easy access for citizens of white countries. Sounds very similar to Trump, such as EU members in the US. He also won't hand back Crimea and supports gun rights. <laughs> So that is a little bit of background on the Balney. Um, this was Putin's response. Of course not. We won't have this kind of habit of assassinating anybody. That's one. Number two is I want to ask you, um, did you order the assassination of the woman who walked into the Congress and who was shot and killed by policemen? Do you know that 450 individuals were arrested after entering the Congress and they didn't? Go there to steal a laptop that came with political demands. 450 people have been detained. You're talking about the Capitol riot. Isn't that, isn't that persecution for political opinions? Boom, son. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Fucking NATO. Oh my god. You think he's the killer? I do. What price? Fucking again, the United States is the biggest. The United States Empire is the biggest purveyor of death and destruction in the world. Russia doesn't have seven hundred military bases in hundred plus countries. They're not sanctioning and starving people all over the global south, are they? No, that's the United fucking States. We don't. The, Russia doesn't have the world's largest prison population. That's the U.S. Russia hasn't let 600,000 people die due to COVID. That's the United States. Who's the real killer here? <laughs> well, and actually what he's in jail for is... Um, Navalny's for em embezzlement. I think he took some money from like a timber company, something like that. Again, this is the person, Navalny, who this Masha Gessen person, again, guest on Democracy Now! is, is propping up as some amazing humanitarian when, she, when he is called Muslim people cockroaches okay i mean jesus christ and the united states hasn't ordered anybody to assassinate they've under obiden under obama biden presidency obama literally ordered the extrajudicial assassination of american citizens overseas All right, sorry, I, I, I can't, I just, I just can't take any more of this. But this is the type of anti-Russia, anti-Russophobia guest that Democracy Now! points up. And let's just do a little search um, for, um, I wanted to search like Democracy Now! and OPCW because I would, Frankly, I doubt they've covered anything. Let's maybe look on Twitter. Fuck off. Twitter search. Let's see if anything comes up. Support for regime change in Syria, helping to cover up the OPCW scandal, Russia gate nonstop. Still continuing that, obviously, with their anti Russia rhetoric and sentiment. 
hosting a Bush era neocons and far right evangelicals with baseless claims of gen- Yep, that's the Adrian Zenz interview I was talking about. Journalism. Nope, that's called hard hitting propaganda. Um, wow. Well, look, and I'm, I'm frankly, I, tr- I trust Aaron Mate on this. Brian Whitaker offers his latest attempt to discredit the OPCW whistleblowers and other ex-officials who are trying to protect the OPCW from man- manipulation. He previously doxed one of the whistleblowers and is to date the only person interviewed by Democracy Now! on this scandal. That's pretty fucking telling. They had this hack on, but not a credible journalist with a lot of expertise on the subject matter, Aaron Mate. <laughs> this person says, I'll make a donation when you stop cheerleading for regime change wars, cover the OPCW cover-up, and have real independent journalists who challenge U.S. imperialism. These are the things you used to do, and I admired you for it. What happened? Agreed. But <clears throat> doesn't seem like they have, yeah, any type of coverage. Nothing's coming up. Pretty telling, right? When it comes to politically sensitive issues, e.g. Syria... Some lefties look to a revered figure like Noam Chomsky before weighing in. I'm not saying that judgmentally. I've done the same. Here Chomsky offers his first public comment in the OBCW scandal. Wow, and then look look at this. Okay, this is on Syria. What are they? What's this guy saying? Uh, most of these people are now in uh, camps, not helped by the, um, not, uh, with, with no aid from the UN agencies because you know that the Russians and the Chinese use the veto and the um, UN Security Council just a few days ago, and this the decision. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, the, um, the uh, talks at the uh, Security Council were about uh, humanitarian aid deliveries uh, without control of the Syrian regime. So it's, it, it is, it is uh, uh, extremely paradoxical that people are displaced by the Syrian regime and uh, the Russians want the Syrian regime to control the uh, aid deliveries. Um, it is- yes, as they fucking should. The Syrian government should control Syria. They should control what's going on in the country, you fucking imperialist hack. Let me say that it is uh, this round of uh, Russian Assad war is only one in uh, almost uh, nine years war. What are the that? Why the fucking country needs so much aid and help right now? Because they are being fucking sanctioned to death. People have access to one hour electricity a day. There's food shortages. It's hard to get medical care. That is a direct result of this U.S.-backed, U.S.-led intervention. Not the revo- not the fault of whoever's in power in Syria. It's the fault of the fucking U.S. Again, this is the type of fucking rhetoric that they're allowing to go unchecked on democracy now. It's disgusting exceeds 600,000 people and it is the um, uh, it was um, um, making a video the method that the regime uh, uh, preferred to face a popular uprising for change and for democracy and for freedom the, you, we know that 600, 6 million and maybe uh, 6 million and a half are displaced uh, outside Syria and the neighboring countries and with uh, yeah and they were displaced because of this U.S. backed intervention that was propping up these Al Qaeda, these jihadist linked groups. I mean, this is the type of imperialist trash and propaganda that democracy now is allowing to go unchecked. It's disgusting. Um, 
Yeah, democracy now has ignored OPCW scandal for over a year. This attempt to acknowledge it has several errors, starting with the title isn't the UN that blocked the testimony, it's the countries that bombed Syria. Um, so again, um, their democracy now is trashed. Um, and then, yeah, I highly recommend you consume your media um, analysis from other groups because Democracy Now! this really parodying U.S. State Department talking points, anti-Russia propaganda, and um, propping up imperialism, especially when it comes to Syria, and that's it's really disgusting. Peace.